I am here to give some thoughts on the birth of emotional intelligence in India. It all started in 2014. My IIT friends and myself decided to quit our respective jobs and come together to start a company. We had a rich experience in diverse areas of technology with a whole set of ideas to change the world. Literally speaking, the ideas varied from problems in deep seas to all the way to space. But there was one area, one fascinating area that equally captured everyone's attention. And that is the emotional needs of the Indian consumer. You see, India is a very emotional country. We get so attached to moments, experiences, characters that we pour milk on posters in good time and burn down effigies in bad. Business relations in this country are also often emotion driven. Our own decisions are not individual led, they are family driven. It's in our genes to expect and give the warmth of human like emotions in day to day interactions. But in the past decade, things have been rapidly shifting. As a result, there are huge gaps in the emotional needs of the consumer. Over a period of time, we identified and validated 32 gaps in the life of the consumer, from which I will talk about the one that we've been working on. You see, for centuries, our in the parents are known to sacrifice, support, guide, and mentor the child, even when the child is an adult and is financially stable. But today, with increasing urbanization and globalization, the typical Indian family is shrinking. The multi-sibling upbringing that our elders a generation back experienced has now shifted to both the parents working with no time left for the child. You will be surprised, according to a survey across 1800 parents in the six metro cities of this country, more than 70% complained about hectic schedules, poor work-life balance, and this negatively impacting their interaction with their child. The numbers are worse. In Bombay, not a single working couple was able to spend more than three hours with their child on a weekday. In such a situation, the overall academic and social improvement of the child becomes a huge concern for the parents. Especially when the same child sees his next door neighbors having a much better environment. This is indeed a very big problem. This got us thinking, why can't technology be used to address such gaps? Why can't technology be used to solve the problems coming out of such gaps? Why can't technology be used to enhance human relations? It is with this underlying thought we all came together to start emotics. At emotics, we add a layer of emotions over machines, systems, and interfaces. The focus is on building artificial intelligence with special emphasis on capturing and responding with the right emotions. So coming to the problem that I had described and our solution for this, with 16 piloted iterations across 3,000 plus kids and 1,000 plus parents, we built an artificially intelligent system that will ensure all round social improvement of the child. In a nutshell, we built a developmental companion. This companion will talk to your child. He will learn and understand and interpret his likes, dislikes, needs, and preferences, and most importantly, stop him from taking any wrong path. He will play fun and educational games with your child like a real companion does. His definition of rights and wrongs have been taken from our ancient cultural scripts, which promote respecting elders, quality of sharing, cleanliness, hygiene, abstaining from any bad vices, and many more. So when we started improving our AI, we realized we have a whole set of platform products where we can embed our AI into, namely laptops, smartphones, tablets, that helps us connect 
with the audio visual sensory receptors of the child, but to truly have a deeply emotional connect, it was necessary to connect with the child's most important sensory receptor, that is touch. Hence this product had to be a hardware product that gave it its own unique identity. As a result, an evolution of our constant efforts, I'm proud to present India's first companion robot for the family, which will bond with the family members and be one with them and also be with the child. I'm sure there are many questions coming in your head. How can a machine do all those things that I just spoke about? And emotional intelligence and what, was, uh, what kind of problems more can it do? And what, what role will it play? The best part of all of this, that this robot is, has a co-learner equation with the child. They both learn from each other and the child feels truly empowered by it. I will take a deeper dive into emotional intelligence and show you some results of our work. So for decades, artificial intelligence researchers have focused on adding linguistic, mathematical, and logical abilities to machines. But they've been very weak in emotional intelligence. I know some people are still wondering about uh, the uh, emotional intelligence and these areas. I'll explain it. Our human affective state can be broken down into four parts. Emotions, moods, sentiments, and personality. The emotions are short term. They get triggered by sight, smell, touch, our own thoughts, while moods get affected slightly more by external disturbances and are slightly longer term than emotions. Our moods change every five, six hours. Sentiments are much longer. They denote our general likes and dislikes. And personality is, as we all know, the unique behavioral characteristics of an individual. He has some personality, she has some personality, everyone has a unique personality manifested over a long time. Intelligence is needed in every walk of the human affective state. I'll give you examples from your day-to-day -day life. You come from a rough day at work and you're sad, you're, and you log into your favorite social media platform, you should the social media platform should be able to gauge your emotional state and throw you posts that will make you happy. That's an example of emotional intelligence. A student sits for a lecture, for an online lecture on a computer, and computers can give broadcast online lectures for hours. But today, the computer doesn't know when the child is beginning to lose interest. If the computer knew that, he would change the course of his lecture to capture the interest of the child again. Just like any good speaker does, if he finds someone not in touch with him, he'll change the course and catch his attention again. This is not as simple as it sounds. It's a fairly complex problem. I'll give you the scenario because distraction can be for two reasons. Either the student is disinterested and frustrated and not liking the concept, or the student is so lost in thinking about it, he is very nicely engaged in it that he's not paying attention to what has been said. The system should be able to understand the difference between the two and then take the corrective path because the corrective path for each will be very different. Sentiments and personality, another example on that. In our country, the concept of family searching and approving the soulmates for their children, that is arranged marriages, is fairly robust and strong for centuries. More than 80% of marriages in this country are still arranged. If products around us could gauge our emotional state, our behavioral pattern over time, and our general personality, they'll play a huge role in assisting the compatibility of matchmaking. These are some examples, and I have a whole sort of examples where machines today are not emotionally intelligent. The objective in all this is not to make a machine emotional. The objective in this is to use emotional intelligence to solve a solid problem. We, in the process of creating our product, we built a framework, which I'll describe to you. So the ideal emotional intelligence framework should have two features in it. Number one, capture the affective state, where it can, once the system should be able to understand what is the affective state of the user. Number two, process and respond 
with the right emotions. In this problem, I will walk you through some of the results of our efforts in each of these areas. So the face is the biggest representation of our expressions. We can use state of the art image processing techniques to decipher the emotional state, a quick video. This guy is angry now and how angry he is, the system can understand. These are our efforts where we can quantify the level of uh, expressions that are there. He's sad. Not only facial, the way you talk, the sentiments can be deciphered in your dialogues. You can say, come here. You can also say, come here. There's a difference in tone and the person's emotional state can be deciphered from there. You not only have visual and audio, you have a whole set of sensory data that can be used to capture the emotional state. The temperature of the individual, heart rate, right up till dilation of the pupil of the eye. Our emotion detection techniques have been built over two years of efforts using some proprietary deep learning frameworks that we created. And I'm proud to share some results that we've been able to touch higher 90s of percentile in capturing basic emotions. This rivals human level accuracy. And with each passing day, our team is working on incorporating more and more complex emotional states and detecting them. So once you've captured all of this, what happens in the next stage? You process and respond. The amount of data that is taken, the medium through which it is taken, and what it does is very application focused. It can be varying from the ATM machine telling you, dude, that's all the money you have for the day, better try next time. Or the water of the shower changing its temperature likewise. But there's one feature which I would like to highlight in our framework. That is, our framework is adaptive and personalized. I'll explain. If there's a user who's generally very shy, and that user has yelled today, our framework will take him a lot more seriously than a person who is generally aggressive and yelling around everywhere he goes. So this is one important aspect that makes the experience very different for each individual. To achieve this gigantic feat, we set up one of the most diverse intercultural and interdisciplinary team which constitutes some of the experts in mathematics, linguistics, psychology, six disciplines of engineering, five streams of design to come together and, and work. And this team is based out of India, Korea, and Russia. The thought behind this is to create an entity that continues to attract talent to this country against the generally perceived that talent always drains from India. So we have been for the past two years running on a dream run where we've got the support of some of the global stalwarts of academia, thought leaders, elite organizations, and our first product is a big step towards achieving our vision of rolling out emotionally intelligent offerings that solve consumer problems. This, we feel, is a truly radical innovation coming out of India that will change the world. It's a global offering where India will be the first to experience the change. And thank you all. Thank you.